Welcome into Bucks Insider presented by Verizon. Casey Phillips here with senior writer and editor Scott Smith. We got a big show for you today. We got a tough game to look back on. We got some interesting Pro Bowl news. We got a heck of a game to look forward to. Lots going on here. Let's start with the Pro Bowl news, which we had some great Pro Bowl news, and then we had some news that maybe made you a little upset, which is <laughs> fair, and made all of us a little upset. <laughs> Call me so, out there. you know, uh, let's start with the, the good. good Pro Bowl news. And very deservedly, Mike Evans was voted into the Pro Bowl. It's the fifth time he's made it. Obviously deserving, he leads the league in touchdown catches, has over 1,200 yards. Uh, you know, all season we've been doing notes about him passing the all-time greats in, ter in terms of touchdown catches. And he's establishing himself, well, he already has, as one of the greatest players in team history. But uh, in terms of number of times in the Pro Bowl, this is number five for him. That is second in team history among offensive players, only to the great Mike Allstott. Those are probably the two most... Um, uh, yeah, heralded. Heralded, good word. Uh, uh, offensive players. That's why I got my masters <laughs> right there. Uh, you look at that, Derek Brooks, eleven. But um, Which most is of, crazy. Most of those are defensive players, but still, Mike is tied for sixth most Pro Bowls in team history. Probably not done. I mean, the way he played this year, you got to think there's a couple pro, more Pro Bowl seasons in belt. his mm -hmm. tank. So that's the good news. Soapbox time. Hit hit us. <sighs> okay. Um, I was a little <laughs> emotional last night. So we covered you up here with this alternates graphics. <laughs> we do have four alternates, and I'm happy these guys are alternates. Antoine Winfield and uh, 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 Tristan Wirfs are both first alternates. They've been to the Pro Bowl before. Uh, Baker Mayfield is a third alternate, which is a great story, and Vita Vey is a fifth alternate. So that's good, but <laughs> I cannot understand how Antoine Winfield Jr. Is not one considered one of the, having one of the three best seasons by a safety in the NFC, not yeah. the NFL, this year. Can I just throw some numbers at you? Please, by all means, throw them. Well, here, first of all, here was your okay. Here was like your I moment. said, I was <laughs> <laughs> in your feels last night. Yeah, I, I, I was in my feels, as you said. Um, it does not make any sense to me. The Levante David season I'm referring to was his second year when he had something like seven sacks and five interceptions and was a first team Associated Press All-Pro, which is a far more exclusive honor. There's only like one guy at every position, so two linebackers. The Pro Bowl lets in a lot more players. He, Levante was a first team All-Pro, but did not make the Pro Bowl, which made no sense. Hopefully Antoine gets the same thing this year because that's voted on by the, by various members of the media. I'm hoping he gets first team AP All Pro, uh, and, and so that will take away from what I consider the biggest snub for the Bucks in a long time. And listen, Casey, we have counterparts that do the same jobs on other teams, and they're probably all standing at their little podiums right now saying, "This guy on our team got snubbed. This guy, I understand. And if you put somebody in, that means somebody else is out. I get it." It's still not the same. Yeah, I'm we're, sorry. We're, we're right. right. <laughs> we're more right than those other teams. Anton Winfield has uh, one game to go. 117 tackles, five sacks as a safety, five forced fumbles, four fumble recoveries, uh, three interceptions, a team leading 12 passes defensed, two turtle doves, <laughs> and, a <bunch> of <laughs> and nobody literally. Nobody in the league has that stat line. He's the At only one. At any position. At any position. At any position. It's, I cannot explain how Anton Winfield was not voted in to the Pro Bowl in the initial vote. He'll probably make it in the long run as an alternate, but right now I'm not feeling very good about it. That's fair. I think we would all agree with you. And unfortunately, I would love to let you now have an emotional break after that <laughs> rant, but now we have to talk about this last week's game, uh. which I know was a challenging one, did not go how the team thought it would, wanted it to, tough one to... Uh, recover from a little bit going into this very important game this next week. So what stands out to you now looking yeah. back about the Saints game? Well, everybody in the locker room, uh, coaches and players, uh, they seemed very irritated and frustrated and not sure why, and this is their words, they came out so flat in such an important game and they felt like they had a good week of preparation. They came out flat. The Saints, who had so much to play for and have been this team's main rival for so many years now they obviously came out strong uh, if you think about the Buccaneers were on that four game losing uh, winning streak excuse me that culminated in the Jaguars blowout of the Jaguars mm -hmm. they scored on six of their first seven possessions in that game and the only one they didn't score was a one play kneel down at the end of the first half then the next week after all this positive momentum the Bucs didn't score until their 10th possession against the Saints. And obviously, turnovers were a big part of the story. The Bucs had never committed more than two in any game this season. They committed four. 
the only two times they made it into Saints territory in the first three quarters, the drives ended in, in um, turnovers. And then in the fourth quarter against a defense that was playing the style of defense that's supposed to drain the clock and not give up big plays, Baker throws for 220 yards. Two long touchdown passes, uh, that's not supposed to happen against the style of defense they were playing. And it just gives you a little indication of what this offense is capable of and what right. it had been showing in the previous week. So what we're hoping, of course, is that this is just one very bad day. And it's and the, the previous four games are more of an indication of where this team is. For sure. And of course, we know this next upcoming game, <clears throat> the major thing everybody's watching for is just the outcome in terms of the implications for playoffs. But there are also some other major milestones yeah. and things to keep track of while you're watching the game as well. So tell people what those are. Yeah, so obviously it, the, it's not as individual milestones aren't nearly as important as getting the win, but when you think about it, you're talking some of your team's best players, and if they have good games, you're more likely to win. Yeah. Yep. So we can still root for these things. Now you see guys here, Chris Godwin needs 27 yards to get his fourth thousand yard receiving seasons, which would be second most in team history to Mike, of course. Rashad White needs 85 yards for his first thousand yard rushing season and the first by a Bucks and Doug Martin in 2015. And Baker Mayfield's really close to a couple of nice round numbers, 4,000 passing yards and 30 touchdown passes. He's already got a career high in both of those categories. And then Mike, who scored a million touchdowns this year, <laughs> one more would tie his own record for both touchdown catches and overall touchdowns in the season for the Buccaneers. But if you put this stuff together, one really interesting note is that if Chris and Rashad both hit those milestones, It'll mark the first time in Buccaneers history that the team has had 2,000-yard receivers and a 1,000-yard rusher in the same season. Wow. Which would say a lot about this offense, which I'm not sure people expected a lot out of it. Yeah, I think that's a really great point. And then I know we showed some of those numbers that Baker Mayfield has put together a really great season statistically in a lot of ways, and we've seen him gut out plays. There's been a lot of leadership, emotion. There's been a lot of things to showcase Baker is having a really great season. But, of course, this last game, um, unfortunately, it was a bit of a turnover situation mm -hmm. for the offense as a whole. Baker threw a couple interceptions, yeah. and that had not been the case. He had really been protecting the ball for, for sure. quite a while. So what have you noticed about some of the statistics when it comes to the yeah. ratio that came in with the plus yeah. 10 differential that was the best, in the, best in the league? So what kind of happened this last week, and just overall, how has this yeah. team been protecting well, the ball? Well, it was the first time that the Bucks had committed more than two turnovers in any game this year, which is a great note, by the way, uh, that it hadn't happened before that. First time Baker threw two interceptions in one game. One of them was on a tip ball, but I guess that's still on him. First time the Bucks lost two fumbles in a game. And they were 0 for 4, or they, excuse me, they were negative 4 in turnover ratio, worst of the year, obviously, didn't get any takeaways. And especially against the Saints, it seems like in recent years, that's the story. And so that's going to be a big part of the story in week 18 in a do or die game. Can the Buccaneers win the turnover battle? Because when they do, as you see here, they usually win. And when they don't, it doesn't go well. Yep. Yeah, that's really interesting. So now let's look ahead to this Panthers matchup. Uh, tell me what you think are some of the keys to this game, knowing that we may not have gotten as good of an indicator in what the matchup could look like with the first one being just a torrential yeah. downpour that greatly affected both offenses and a lot about the game. So. What do you feel like in a little bit more normal weather conditions this matchup could look like? Well, I mean, I think that game is, is um, informing the Buccaneers this week as they're considering the Panthers because they only won by three. And I know you're right. It was a torrential rain and that affected things, but it was the same for both teams. And it was a close game right down the, to the end until uh, non-Pro Bowler Antoine Winfield intercepted a pass <laughs> right at the end. Is that how you're <laughs> going to refer to him the rest of the season? No, no, just... Right now. <laughs> Just right now while you're still <laughs> angry. Okay. Um, so the Panthers, obviously, they made the big move at quarterback this year, and they traded up and to the first pick and took Bryce Young, the Alabama star. And he's had the sort of ups and downs you'd expect from a rookie quarterback. They don't all just drop in and be awesome like C.J. Stroud. Um, he had a really good game two weeks ago, and they almost beat the Packers back and forth, threw for like 300 yards and a couple touchdowns, no picks. But overall, He's had some struggles. He's been sacked 59 times, which is a lot, and he's actually ranked Poor last. Guy. Yeah, he's actually ranked last amongst uh, qualified passers and passer rating. And like you said, poor guy, he's not a big guy. So taking a lot of hits, you worry, right? Mm -hmm. But he's gutted it through. Um, I think he's a very, very talented player. The Buccaneers are hoping they can contain him in the pocket. They, in the last game, he got out a little bit and made some plays. So that's a big deal, um, you know. Yeah, I think that's what the main yeah, thing so is. Yeah, so pressuring him is going to be the big part. What about their defense and what stands out to you? They've kind of had a quietly good 
season on defense. They rank third in yards allowed, third in passing yards allowed. Uh, Derek Brown is a really big force in the middle. Frankie Lubu is a nice uh, linebacker that makes a ton of plays. I, it, it's curious if J.C. Horn will play. He was active but did not play last week with a toe injury, but he's a really good corner when he does play. Um, the weird thing about their defense, though, is, like I said, they're third in yards allowed, third fewest, but they're 30th in points allowed, which is kind of a weird combination. Hmm. I'm not sure, exactly sure how that happened, maybe red zone issues or turnovers, but obviously the Bucks care more about points than yards. So if they can keep, you know, if they can c continue that trend for the Panthers, that'll be a good thing. All right, well, that's going to do it for us on this edition of Buccaneers Insider. Again, stay tuned to the Buccaneers website and social media all week for the preview of this matchup against the Panthers, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>